has been reversed out of your life because God has anointed you. Have you wondered why that sickness did not overtake you? Because God has anointed you. Have you wondered why when they ran you out of the church because you wanted to please God and they ran you out and they rejected you, but you still overcame that? It is because God has anointed you. Have you wondered why you've dealt with so much betrayal and you've been manipulated and lied on? Because God has anointed you and wherever there is anointing, there will be spiritual warfare. But there's one thing that I want you to understand. Because God has anointed you, you will overcome the weapons of the enemy. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Glory be to God on this blessed Sunday morning. I hope all of you and your families are doing well and remaining safe out there. And most importantly, I hope you are seeking the things of God at a very high level and um, desiring to walk in genuine repentance and holiness unto the Lord through His Son, Jesus. And as always, welcome to the Deliverance and Breakthrough channel. I thank God for um, His presence and His blessings on this morning. And I thank God for using um, this channel as a spiritual refuge to lead those of you to repentance, spiritual growth, and healing and deliverance in many areas of your life. It is truly a blessing to be used by God on this platform, and I do not take it lightly. And I thank God for those of you who consistently support the deliverance and breakthrough. Uh, I thank God for your genuine support and fellowship it has truly been a blessing and those of you who do support this channel remind me of why i do this it is truly a blessing and even those of you who listen to this content um you know who i haven't had an opportunity to fellowship with i also thank god for you as well um, my prayer is that god would use this channel to talk to your heart your mind in your soul and deal with the various issues that need to be addressed head on, um, which puts you in a position of true deliverance and a closer relationship with God through his son, Jesus. And lastly, I want to encourage those of you who are on the battlefield of the Lord in ministry, wherever God has placed you. Uh, ministry has certain so many areas uh, rather God is using you on a social media ministry rather you're being used um, on your job within your family in your neighborhood passing out Bible tracts helping the poor and those in need prison ministry um, rather God is using you in a ministry um, so wherever God has placed you, I want to encourage you to continue to seek God and press forward into your assignment. Doesn't matter how small or big it is. Always remember, every soul is precious and there is no price on anybody's soul. It is the soul is priceless. So we must be thankful for the uh, pastor that God has given us and press forward. Um, it is a reality that the enemy will fight against us. There will be many distractions and many hindrances that we will face. Uh, so continue to press forward. And I, and lastly, I am a living witness. God will empower you to overcome all of it in Jesus' name. Um, there is a word from the Lord this morning that I want to share and transmit in your life as always if this word is not for you i pray that you would pray for those this word is for amen um today i want to talk to you about um how to overcome masturbation i want to talk about that 
how to overcome masturbation. And I sense in the spirit um, to gently teach this message and take you through the various steps how to overcome this. And this isn't, masturbation isn't, or the stronghold of masturbation isn't just an issue for single people. It is a reality that there are many people who are married um, who also struggle with masturbation, the stronghold of masturbation as well. So I'm going to minister to both sides. Um, it, and I also thank God for those of you who have been delivered from this vicious stronghold of uh, masturbation. There are those who have been delivered from this. There are those who who repented of this and, and God has taught them how to deny their flesh and to walk in the spirit and to overcome aggressive temptations of, of masturbation. I thank God for uh, those of you and let's continue to pray for those who are still struggling um, in this area. I want to talk to you because there are several people who are really struggling with masturbation extremely aggressively. And there are so many people that have so many doors open, any points, they have many points of contact that are open in their lives uh, that is giving the enemy and their flesh the legal grounds to dictate uh, spiritual failure via uh, the sin of masturbation. Let me say this, that yes, masturbation is a sin and uh, God is not pleased uh, with it at all. Um, one, of, one of the things that um, we must understand is the only way to overcome masturbation and be set free from this is a relationship with God through his son Jesus to where you're operating in genuine repentance and a hunger for holiness. The scripture text that I want to release unto you, which is clear biblical evidence that you can overcome masturbation. The Bible says I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. That scripture, that scripture is so powerful because it lets us know that through through the presence of God, through his son, Jesus, if we have a willing heart we can overcome masturbation right now. And that is one thing I've learned about God is that when you have a hunger for God to deny your flesh, you can overcome this aggressive stronghold of masturbation. Now, we're going to devy or deal with several areas that you need to avoid to overcome masturbation. Okay. Um, let's deal with, let's deal with, Pornography. I want you to understand that masturbation is fueled by sexual content. Sexual content has the ability to fuel and to magnify the stronghold. I've did so much research. I've read several comments and, and things of, of that nature. And I've seen people say, why do I keep struggling with this? There are so many people who struggle with masturbation and many of them have so many open doors that fuels masturbation. Let's deal with pornography. Pornography is extremely dangerous and there are people who go on uh, sinful sexual websites of perversion and it fuels and it empowers that that stronghold of masturbation there are some people when they look at this stuff and they feed uh their 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 hearts this this filth it empowers masturbation it fuels it and this is why we must be careful what we feed ourselves. Pornography and masturbation in, in some cases go hand in hand because the enemy knows 
that in order to keep you bound in the spirit, he has to seduce you into feeding yourself uh, sexual content, which empowers and fuels masturbation. There's some people that figure that, uh, and let me deal with this because there are some people who feel like, well, I'll just watch pornography, but I won't masturbate. And that's what the enemy wants you, you to believe. And then after you've watched so much of it, your flesh begins to get stirred up. You begin to get stimulated and you end up masturbating again. Uh, flirting with sin is extremely dangerous. Uh, this is why God loves you. And I want you to understand that God loves you very much beyond what you can ever understand. And I want you to understand that deliverance is available right now. If you really want God to help you, hallelujah, glory to God. If you really want to be delivered, God will deliver you right now. I'm a living witness of that right now. You can be set free for your whole duration of your life right now if you want it. But you must be willing to let it go. Pornography is dangerous. And the enemy knows that as long as you feed yourself this, this sinful sexual content, it now gives him the legal grounds through your flesh to keep you in bondage. Pornography is extremely dangerous. And it fuels masturbation. Okay? It, it fuels it. Close the door of, of pornography and ask God to help you to close the door of pornography. And keep that door closed by any means and never open it again. Okay? Let's move on to the uh, next thing. This is what gets a lot of people as well. It is sexual, sinful music is another open door, a point of contact. Sexual music feeds masturbation. And this is why God is calling for his people not to listen to this filth. And I get it because I understand the 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 seduction of music. I'll take you deeper into my life because when you come across this channel, I want you to understand. I understand the struggle. And I really want you to feel that when you come across this channel. I understand the struggle. Okay? Because I've I've been there. I've had struggles in my life and things that God had to deliver me from. But my deliverance came in my own life when I had a willing heart to choose to please God more than pleasing my flesh. Oh, glory to God. I felt that one. True deliverance comes when you want to please God more than your fat flesh. Even when the, the temptation to masturbate is extremely aggressive, I want you to understand that God will keep you if you want it and if you have a willing heart. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's deal with, with that music. I understand because I was so enchanted. And I mean, R&B music for me was such a, it was idolatry. Before God, before I yielded to deliverance, I mean, I was so, I would say that I was so, I was so fatuated by R&B music. It's all I wanted to play in my younger years. And some of that leaked over into my younger years of faith until the Lord convicted me and dealt with me about that. And I trashed all of my R&B music. And I mean, it was a fight. Sexual music fuels masturbation. It fuels it to hear sexual lyrics, even if it's if it's if it's soft, um, you know, if it's soft sexual lyrics of romance, which which entices our flesh. But you have a lot of people who are listening to all of this music with all these sexual aggressive sexual lyrics. And now the enemy has the legal grounds because you're feeding yourself this music that is not of God. And there are a lot of people who are struggling with masturbation because some of them are feeding themselves sexual music. That door of sexual music must be closed because it's feeding it. Because I want to teach you via the spirit how to eliminate every sexual door in your life. Because it fuels it. It fuels it. 
It fuels it. Anything that is sexual and sinful fuels masturbation. These doors must be closed. I mean every door, and there are several doors that we are going to deal with. Many of you, God has already told you to let go of, of this evil sexual music from, from this world that is not of God. And I get it. I get it. I understand it's not easy. I understand it's the hard truth when God begins to shave and cut things out of your life. I mean, it is a, it is, it is a brutal process. The process of sanctification and holiness is brutal, and I've been through it. To where God begins to tell you to walk away from stuff that you love in your flesh. Walk away from sexual music. And the enemy wants to create this narrative that listening to sexual music is normal. But it isn't, okay? Don't feed yourself sexual music if you're trying to overcome masturbation. OK, now let's deal with this one. Fornication. Fornication fuels masturbation. And this is why the Bible makes it clear how dangerous fornication is when you're out here having sex and you're not married. Fornication is extremely dangerous. And when you open up that door, now the enemy has the legal grounds again. And the Bible talks about this, neither give place to the devil. I want you to understand that these are points of contact. Fornication is a big one. And the Bible talks about that, that those who engage in fornication will not enter into the kingdom of God. Those that practice it, I mean, they live in it. Okay? Walk away from it. And I understand that sexual strongholds are extremely aggressive and they can only be cast out through the power of God, repentance, holiness, a relationship with God, fasting and prayer, and feeding yourself the things of God at a high level. Walk away from it. It doesn't matter how, how good that man or that woman makes you feel. There's a lot of people that are, are, are engaging in fornication and it, and it, it induces the masturbation in their life because they have points of contact open. OK, there's a lot of people who are on their way to to eternal destruction of hell because of sexual sin. Fornication is extremely dangerous and it fuels it. And there are some people when they start fornicating, their flesh almost turns to a vampire. They crave it. Your flesh is dangerous. That's why the Bible says walk in the spirit so that you won't fulfill the deeds of your flesh. And there are so many of you who keep falling into masturbation because you're living below the standards of the spirit. You're feeding yourself the things of this world more than the things of God. And you will continue to fail because there are some of you who will go weeks without masturbating. I mean, months. And then it'll just overtake you. I want you to understand, even when the temptation is aggressive, God has already spiritually engineered you to overcome right now if you want it. Listen, these we have so much potential if you would yield to the spirit of God. I have made decisions in my life that I never knew that I had the capability of making decisions to literally walk away from everything that that my flesh wants desperately. Listen, through the power of God working in your life, if you have a willing heart, God will empower you to stop masturbating if you want it. But you got to want God more than pleasing your flesh. And that is why so many of you have failed and you will continue to fall into masturbation until you say, God, I want you more than pleasing my flesh. Glory to God. You can overcome masturbation right now, but you're going to have to close these doors. Walk away from pornography because it feeds masturbation. Walk away from sinful sexual music because it feeds masturbation. Walk away from fornication because it feeds masturbation. Masturbation is a demonic stronghold that would have you by the throat and masturbation is never satisfied. And this is why you got people who are masturbating 20 and 30 and 40, 50 times a day. The results are brutal. And then there's some of you who put yourself on a schedule to where you will masturbate once a week just to kill the urge. 
and I and I heard something that was so disturbing from I think it was a a a uh, a um a pastor and I think excuse me a pastor and I think he was a mega a mega religious system pastor he said that uh, masturbation prevents us from committing sin. He said that masturbation prevents him from committing adultery. This is where the enemy comes in to deceive people. People using masturbation as a method to prevent you from, 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 from with, with the illusion that masturbation prevents you from fornicating and committing adultery is a lie. You can't trade sin for sin. That's not how it works, but that is how the enemy does. That's why the Bible says the enemy is a liar and the father of it. He's really crafty at <laughs> he's really crafty at deception. I mean, the enemy has a a Ph.D., a bachelor's degree in deception, extremely crafty at deceiving people into eternal destruction and separation from God. Because he wants to create this narrative. And there's some of you who are single. I'm going to deal with married folks too. There's some of you who are single and feel like, well, if I masturbate, that that'll kill the urge. It'll prevent me from fornicating. Let me tell you something. If you want to be delivered, you don't have to use masturbation to, 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 to have you thinking like you won't fornicate. Uh -uh. Yield to the presence of God. Use the, the, the power of God through his son, Jesus, to teach you how to walk away from, 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 from sexual sin. Masturbation is not the answer to prevent fornication, but it's the presence of God calling on, on, on Jesus to empower you to deny your flesh. And that is what the enemy does is he wants you to use these natural carnal tactics that will not work, that have no power. Because there's some of you. There's people that's even married who say that, well, I'll just fornicate. I mean, I'll just masturbate to pre to prevent myself from committing adultery. No, that is not the that's deception. It's the presence of God. And walking in the spirit that prevents us from doing such things of sexual sin, of fornication and adultery. Don't you can't trade sin for sin. Because there's even doctors who say, well, masturbation is natural. It cleanses the body. That is such deception. And you got so many people who fall in victim of that, who believe, well, the doctor said it's normal. Masturbation is healthy. It cleanses the body. No, because the body already has a cleansing system that will cleanse and filter itself already. You don't need to listen to that false medical advice from the enemy and that's what the enemy does he poses as an angel of light to deceive people into separation from god i want you to understand that the enemy is playing for keeps he wants your soul so bad i mean if you knew how bad the enemy wants your soul that's why the bible says in john 10 10 the thief comes to steal kill and destroy but God has come to give us life and give us that more abundantly. Okay? That there's an anointing on this teaching to de deliver somebody right now. Okay? So, again, close the door of pornography. Close the door of sexual music. Close the door of fornication. Okay? Now, because I get it. Because there's some of you. Who have been in these relationships and they stimulated your body in ways that you never felt. And it fueled masturbation. And you find yourself masturbating thinking about them. Some of you have been with people that, that, that stimulated you with so many orgasms. And it created such a soul tie that's hard to, to break because your body was stimulated with demonic sex that took your flesh and heightened your sexual senses. It is not of God. It will destroy you. Okay, excuse me. It will destroy you. So walk away from these things. God will keep you out of stop fornicating. He'll teach you and show you how if you want to be delivered. Now let's move on to the next step.
This is what really gets a lot of people as well. Adultery. This is for the married people. Let's shift gears and let's focus on those who are married. Even those who are married. Okay? Adultery fuels masturbation. It fuels it. Some of you right now who are married are committing adultery. Not everybody, because I'm fully aware there are some people, men and women, who love God and they love their wife and their family. And they have no interest in, in adultery and they learned how to deny their flesh and overcome temptation. But pray for those who are struggling. There are those who are in adulterous relationships and it's fueling masturbation. It's fueling it. And when you're not around that person, you think about them and you masturbate at the thought of them. See, that's what the enemy does. He gets in these marriages because there's some marriages. And I think for some single people, not all, some single people think that married people have an advantage. But in some cases, married people don't. Because there's married people who are frustrated sexually. There's married men and women, husband and wives, who are not being pleased emotionally and physically in their marriage. Not, not all marriages, but some. It is a fact. And I want to deal with that and really push the envelope in this message. Just because people are married, it doesn't mean that they're, that they're satisfied sexually. There's some people that have broken marriages. There are some people that the husband is not sexual. He doesn't have a high sex drive. Sometimes the wife doesn't have a high sex drive. And the enemy gets in there and it causes problems. So sometimes married people, they figure, well, they'll just masturbate to prevent themselves from committing adultery. No, that is not the answer. God, God will bring healing in a marriage between husband and wife if they let God in. And seek God for deliverance in their marriage. And there's people who have soul ties. Some of you have soul ties. Even being single and being married. Thinking about that person. These soul ties must be destroyed. Because it is linking you to that man. And linking you to that woman. And the enemy knows that he's going to have the legal grounds with these soul ties until you, you get in position with God and go in spiritual warfare and break these soul ties. He knows it. There are some of you, you got people that you've been with in the past via sexual sin who is projecting lust towards you. They're projecting that towards you and you find yourself masturbating uh, at the thought of them. Because there, it is a reality that some people have got into sexual sin with people who were attractive. It is a reality. Some people are attractive. It's just the way that it is. And the enemy uses that to lure you back in that. These doors must be closed. Close the door of adultery. Repent before God. Deal with the issues in your marriage and ask God to help you in your marriage in every broken area. And he'll do it. Because he loves you and deliverance is available. Let's deal with, and there's so many areas. Let's deal with, with sexual TV. This is one of the big ones. TV programming is destroying so many people's connection with God. There are so many people, they'll be feeling fine until they start watching this sexual content. And it starts stirring up their flesh and they end up masturbating. Because they saw some sexual explicit image on TV. This is, this is so many areas. And, the, and shame on the religious system for not some of the, the religious system was established by Satan to lead people away from God and not to address repentance, holiness, and living a life that is pleasing unto the Lord. The religious system does not teach how to deny your flesh. The religious system teaches you how to deny the spirit of God and live in sin. Oh, I just said that one. Glory to God. I felt that one. The religious system that is not of God. There's a significant difference between a ministry to where the pastor is holy. And there's a significant difference in a religious system that will, that does not preach repentance. The objective and the end game of the religious system is to teach you how to deny the voice of God and yield to your flesh and live your best life in sexual sin. That is the, the, the blueprint or the end game of the religious system and come out of these false churches too. 
Any one of you that go and since we're on this topic, any one of you who go to a to a, a false church where the pastor is not holy, he does not love the people, and he does not preach salvation, sin, and preach against sin and repentance and how to deny your flesh. Take yourself and your family and leave and run and seek God. You're better off in house worship following God than you are in a false church. <laughs> But these TV shows are what's getting people because they wonder what, why do they keep falling? Because there's a point of contact with what you watch. And we all, a lot of us have been taught that TV is normal. When you watch what you want, it's okay. I get it because I've been there until God opened up my eyes and showed me as I grew older and more seasoned in the Lord, he told me the danger of evil television. Watching people have sex and fornicate and stuff like that. God does not want that stuff in your spirit. And many of you, God has given you so much grace and so much patience and so much mercy. But now it's time for you to cut that mess off. And even now, God is shaving stuff off my life. And I thank God for maturity. Maturity. 